Hello, welcome to Biggest Little Library. I'm Amy Newberry. And I'm Tammy Ruff. We're two librarians discussing all the books in the stacks. The new and notable. The lost and forgotten. The hot and the not. So let's get to it. But first, but Amy, first, yes. let's tell our listeners about our Patreon site. So as a Patreon supporter, you're going to get early access to all of our episodes, some great monthly polls about our reading choices, seasonal book lists, mini sewed videos, and an additional newsletter. There's lots of great stuff there. Last month, we gave everyone a free glimpse of all that goodness. It's still up on the Patreon site, so we're hoping you'll take a look at it and then decide to you know, yeah. support our little podcast. We would love it if you consider supporting us. Check it out at patreon.com backslash biggest little library or link through our website or even click right here through the show notes on this podcast. All, All right. right, here we go. I know. Happy President's Day. Happy President's Day. I'm actually really excited about our our little discussion here. I, I kind of did a deep dive, but you know, I know as you a historian. Did. I know because I love you, but you're um, a little bit nerdy because you love the history. <laughs> and this true. is like really scratching a lot of, like ticking a lot of boxes, I think is the right expression. It is. And I've been to quite a few historic places and, you know, different homes of and, and presidential libraries of, you know, different presidents. So, you know, about a year, and, yeah, about a little over a year ago. No, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Uh-huh. I got to think about this because COVID. I know. Like, changed, like where are like, we? Where right. We, yeah. Well, for Katie's spring break in her junior year, we drove through Dallas. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to stop. There's a presidential library there. Yeah. And I also wanted to go to the book depository. Yes. Right. Of course. Yeah. She wanted to do none of that. Katie. I know, Catherine. <laughs> Catherine. I know. I'm so disappointed. Wow. And so it's funny because I think it was just like Kevin was talking to her about that because she's still in Texas. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you know, if you could ever get to Dallas, you should go check that out. She's like, I'd really like to do that. I'm like, you know, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, you didn't want to do that. <laughs> yep. Totally put the brakes on. I know. I yeah. said, we could have already had that off, checked off our mm-hmm. boxes. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, and she brushes it off like, you know. Yeah. It was never really a thing, but it was a thing for yes. me, and I'm sad. It's a, th- a thing. I've only been to one presidential library, which was um, Harry Truman's okay. in Independence, Missouri. And they're, like, it's, they're serious there. It was, it's not a fool around kind of place. I mean, they're pretty solemn and, you know, Okay, can I ask serious. you something? And you may not know this, mm-hmm. and I feel like we should know this because we're librarians, but has every president ha- like built a library? Well, I don't think the, like the, the first whole guys. group. Yeah. I, th- I would guys. say more in modern times. Okay. A lot of them have, I know there's a Nixon and a, you know, Kennedy and right. um, I don't know about Eisenhower, but I feel like it's something that's happened, you know, more modern times than in the past. But like with Washington stuff, you know, that's all been, you know, mm-hmm. archived mm-hmm. at Mount Vernon. Mm-hmm. So that's possible for some of the, you know, I, I just want to point out that like (laughs) great political leaders build libraries what does that tell you about exactly how they feel about libraries yeah yeah well and you know a lot of them are buried there too so like that's cool Harry Truman and Bess his wife are buried at his and I'm pretty sure Nixon is buried at his in Whittier California so that may be something um you know I know that the Obamas are working on where that's going to be and what that's going to look like right so interesting mm -hmm. well so let's talk. So let's talk president. All right, it's very exciting. It's it is. I, I think you know. There's there's certainly a lot written. I don't know if you want to go first. Or you want me to? Well, hmm. I mean, I'm I am going to talk about George, who is our first. Um, I know you are, and I love <laughs> love 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 the cover of mm-hmm. yours and the title of yours. Don't give it away yet. Okay. Okay. Let's it's cheeky. Actually, yeah, it's totally cheeky, and mm-hmm. the cover is so great. So and. Well, why don't you go? Well, well, no, let's start with yours then. Okay. Because we love Jenna. I mean, we do. We Mm -hmm. love Jenna. Okay. So I read Sisters First, Stories from Our Wild and Wonderful Life, and it's by Jenna Bush Hagar. Hagar? Hagar. I think it's Hagar. Hagar. And Barbara Pierce Bush. So you can see how cute they look on the cover. And you have this book. It's adorable. I do. My sister Candy gave it to me, and I haven't read it yet. So I can see why your sister would give this to you. Yeah. So let me just tell you, I don't want to give too much about this book away because mm-hmm. I think it's a great, it's a great read. And I, I can see why sisters would share it with each other because I think what it would do is it would stimulate a lot of thinking about your own childhood mm-hmm. and 
your upbringing by your parents and do you ever get together with your siblings and talk about your collective memories and you both have a different, like a different story? Oh, sometimes it feels like revisionist history to me where, you know, my older sister, who's only, you know, less than two years older than I am, Mm -hmm. will say something about our childhood. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember that. Are you sure? I don't think that's right. And then our younger sister is five years younger than I am and seven years younger than my older sister. So her memories are much different too, only because either, you know, there was a, an amount of time where she wasn't with us yet. Right. Right. I know. So, so, okay. What I loved about this book Mm -hmm. is it, it bounces around and it does give you a lot of insight into the kind of the back room of what's going on in their family Mm -hmm. while both the dad and the grandfather were in their presidential times. Right. So I loved that part because it felt, it felt like a very intimate view of just like the normal things that parents do and, oh yeah, my dad's the governor and my grandfather right. is the president. <laughs> right. It's like, right. you know, in just fact, everyday life. <laughs> yeah. And I can't remember. So the cool thing about it is each chapter alternates between Barbara and Jenna. And so we know that they're oh. fraternal twins. Each one was named. One was named for Barbara Bush. Okay. So George, or George W. George W.'s mom. Mom. Right. Thank you. And then the other one was named for Laura's mother. Okay. So that's where we get the Jenna, the Jenna Bush. We did that with middle names in our family. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. And so Barbara is, and you may know this just from being like in the media and watching them kind of grow up. Barbara's the quiet kind of studious one. Mm-hmm. And Jenna is the outgoing kind of, you know, the whirlwind. She's the otter. Yeah. In she way. <laughs> is the otter. That is correct. Uh-huh. And so uh, what I loved the most is both George and um, Laura, you can see them pictured here. Uh-huh. They really wanted kids uh-huh. and they'd actually like try to adopt. Oh, So I didn't know that about them. I didn't either. So I think that when they... Somewhere along the line, I think the girls were going off to college and Laura gave them both a picture of the two of them Mm -hmm. as a couple. And it was the picture that they submitted to the adoption agency and just was like, hey, this was your, these are us. This is a picture of us before we ever had you, but we so desperately wanted children and like, this is us wanting you. So know that you are always wanted and loved. I love that. I know yeah. Right. I mean, librarian, she, a librarian that, uh-huh. mm-hmm. came from the mom. Yes. And Laura was an only child. I did not oh, know, that, know either. that either. And yeah. so it makes sense to me that she was kind of quiet and studious. She has her master's in library science. Mm-hmm. She's awesome. She is. So I loved learning just about the backstory of, um, what their life looked like and how they lived in Midland, Texas, which I've flown into right. before. Right. Listen, Midland is and I didn't realize that's where they lived in Texas. Yeah, well, so they lived, that's where they lived in Austin, obviously, when he was governor. Okay. Went to a normal high school. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these things. Can you imagine? I know. Can you imagine having your dad be the governor of the state mm-hmm. and you're just at high school? I mean, I think that, I know that happens here in Nevada. Cause, yeah, because you know. the governor lived like three blocks from me. Yeah, and I one had point. his daughter in the <laughs> library right. class. Yeah. So, I mean, mm-hmm. one, well, at least one of his kids. So, I don't know. I just think it's kind of an interesting life. One of them said, and I don't remember which twin it was talked about that they thought everybody's grandpa like ran for president. Oh, you know, right. Because they had to go to inauguration mm-hmm. and they're like, well, we just thought this is what grandpas do. Right. How cute is that? That is cute. That, 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 that is how uh-huh. you're, how you picture the world. Right. You know? Right. So I loved, I loved hearing about their stories. I liked hearing about how close they are. They're mm-hmm. really, really tight, mm-hmm. which is not a big surprise. I think when you're growing up in a, in a very unusual set of circumstances where you're you're pretty much a legacy to the presidency, right? Like right. you're going to be close because who else can you really let on the inside? Right. I, I remember when um, they arrived at the White House and everybody was so excited to have children in the White House again yeah. because it had been, you know, some time by the time that presidents usually get into office, their children are adults. Right. And maybe there are grandchildren, yeah. but, you know, it's it was nice to have well, children in the White they, House. They Things were, change a bit. They were, um, I thought they were younger than they were, Mm -hmm. but they were kind of going into those college years. Or were they, I thought they were teenagers when they first got there. Maybe not. I'll have to do some more research. So maybe it was this grandchildren that they're visiting, you know. Yes. And there's pictures of them in the book where they're having, you know, lunch at the, at the White House. I mean, can you imagine? I know. It's pretty crazy. Um, 
was there a story in there that you thought was particularly insightful or funny about their time there? Because I heard Jenna talk about Juan once. What, what was, well, tell me what you. So she was talking about how they were, I th- that's why I thought they were teenagers. So I don't, I'm pretty sure they weren't 21. No, and they, they were not. They snuck they out not. and they, um, I think they abandoned their detail. <laughs> and I love that. I don't know if it was one or both of them was tipsy when they came home. And, you know, you can't really sneak into the White House. So, you know, no. things, you know, I think um, sort of hit the fan there. Right. But they were really just being kids. And so, and I do remember about, I think it was Barbara, actually, even though that doesn't quite fit with someone who's quieter, you know, and although, right. you know, maybe it's the quiet one sometimes, but one of, they were criticized in the press about their behavior yeah. and I, and people were like, you can't do that. They're children, you know, yeah. their parents are held to an account, you know, into a, a, well, a higher standard maybe, but they're kids and kids all make mistakes. Well, I feel like they did that though with the Clintons too. And with Chelsea oh, Clinton, yeah. they were kind That's of, true. they were kind of mean right. spirited. The press was mean spirited with her right. at times because she mm-hmm. was going through that awkward awkward, gawky right. phase, you know, exactly. that all women go through at 12, 13. It's not pretty pretty. And then know? again, in your late fifties. Yeah. Right. I mean, did I ever grow out of that? I don't think so. Yeah. So anyway, it was a really interesting read. Oh, back to the story. Oh yeah. So sorry. I did love Barbara applied for, um, like a study abroad. Oh. And so she did some time in Rome and she said that that was the first time that she'd ever not, there hadn't been another, like when she they called roll, which they probably didn't, Uh you know, but her sister wasn't there with her Oh, and how transformative that experience was, but also drew them closer. And so Mm. what I, I think my biggest takeaway and what I loved the most is I discovered that the Bush family, both senior and, you know, I guess junior Mm -hmm. are big family people. Right. Like they, I just cannot imagine they would, you know, spend time with their grandpa. They call them Gampy. Oh, that's right. I and Ganny. Yeah. And they would go up to Maine for the summer and hang out there with the whole family. Like everybody yeah. would kind of converge on this family compound and spend time to rest and relax. And of course, as I was telling you before, heads of state would show up or, mm-hmm. you know, just political figures, right. you know, just show up for dinner. Mm-hmm. And so what I appreciated is, is just they really spent time connecting as a family. And I guess I just don't envision that nowadays. I think the Obamas did it because they had young I think kids. so, definitely. Mm-hmm. But I guess I just don't, I don't know that I really see our presidents. I know they're, they have families, but you don't right. really see them on the family side. You only see the political side. True. I, I do remember a cute story about the girls, too, writing a letter to um, Sasha and Malia Obama about just things that they thought the girls should know about the house, like fun things yeah. they did, like yeah. sliding down a certain banister yeah. or, you know, a midnights in the bowling alley, some things like that. And um, I think both Obamas and maybe Michelle even mentioned it in Becoming about that transition and yeah. how... Laura and George had them to the White House and the children and that I think Barbara and Jenna took the girls around and Aww. then showed them everything and some of the fun things they could do. Because you mean I, everybody was getting along? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, exactly. You mean it was like yes. how it should be? Right, right. Okay. So I thought that, I, you know, they both endeared themselves to me, Jenna and Barbara, yeah. because they did that, yeah. and, you know, with the girls, because I'm sure, you know, it was frightening for them to, to move. Can you even imagine... I mean, what yeah. a what a small club. Exactly. What a That's small so true. club. And to even have the crossover of ages mm-hmm. where you, you know, could connect. I mean, because I know right. that they're a little bit older, but how nice for them to like say, hey, you know, been there, done that. I don't know. Right. I don't know. It's just super so sweet. I did. I love it. The forward in here is um, by, of course, uh, Laura Bush, which I, oh, you know. Oh, I love that. Our other, our fellow librarian, Laura. Yes. So I enjoyed it. Um, I really loved the pictures. I don't know why. Maybe it's because my very first election that I voted in was um, was the George Bush Clinton Perot election. Do you remember okay. that when Ross Perot? Yes, I do remember threw that. his hat into the ring and like really, it was um, George Senior's second term. Yes, and he did not win. Because right. Right. because yes, of, yep, one term president. Yeah. yeah which yeah, is kind Clinton's of unusual. 
Yes. So, yes. Anyway. Um, she does have a new book out too. Jenna does? She does. What is that one called? It's called Everything Beautiful in Its Time, Seasons of Love and Loss. Actually, I think I remember seeing that. Yeah. And I cannot wait to read that one. Yeah. Is it just by her? Because this is shared by both the It sisters. is just by her. And I was just going to, I was going to see if I could see when it came out in September of last year. What? That's mm-hmm. the one I should have picked up, but I felt like I had to read this one first because I wanted all oh, the no, inside yeah. stories. I think it's great. And it's funny when she talks about it like snowing in Midland, Texas. Okay. Oh. First of all, you know, I've spent some time because I've flown yes. in there a couple times recently. Right. And right. will likely, by the time this episode drops, I mean, mm-hmm. I might even be back there. Right. Visiting Katie Bug in San Angelo. And so um, she talks about it like snowing. And I just kind of was giggling because the other day when we went out to see Katie, like in November and then like through December, it's like 70, 80 degrees, you know, it's right. pretty warm. The other day, Katie sent me a picture. It snowed a ton and somebody, somebody had actually um, built like a snow duck or oh, something that's funny. outside of her room yeah. area. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of snow. I did see that because on Facebook. You oh, know, did she post um, it? No, I didn't see her post that. But I saw people who that I know that live in Texas, yeah. different parts of Texas, you know, Houston, you know, yeah. just posting pictures of the snow. And then, you know, we follow F1 racing. And so there was <laughs> snow at the track. And so they <laughs> posted a picture. Do. Yeah, of course you do. So, yeah. So they, they, and they bounced around quite a bit because they went to work. So they were in Midland, then they moved to Washington, D.C. so mm-hmm. that George, the younger George, could help the older George on his campaign. And then they came back and obviously lived in Austin. They kind of, they've had an interesting life for yeah. sure. Well, and I don't know a lot about the ranch. I know it's quite large. I did see a Jay Leno episode of his garage where he went and visited them and Laura and um, George, George had come up in a big truck and they were joking about driving around and... I think Jay Leno said something to him like, are you allowed to drive on your own? And he goes, oh, there's people watching, <laughs> like joking around. Like, they let me every now and then drive a truck. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, and it's funny because George has a special name for each of the girls, which I think is really cute. Oh, that's cute. I know. He seems like a really, I don't know. They're, they're good dads. They're good dads. Both of the Georges were great dads. Anyway, back to what I was saying. Nice family people. Nice family people, which makes me feel good Mm -hmm. about the presidency when I think in a time that is so volatile right now, you know, just feels Mm -hmm. a little tenuous. Um, Sisters First, Stories from Our Wild and Wonderful Life, and it's by Jenna Bush Hager and Barbara Pierce Bush. I love it. I know. Okay. So, Tams, what I know what you read. I'm a little jealous of the cover. Super cute. It is. It's cheeky. It is cheeky. So it's called You Never Forget Your First, a biography of George Washington Washington from Alexis Co. Okay. So a woman. So the first Love thing it. I wanted to address is that um, she's a historian. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting is she was sort of reorganizing her office at mm-hmm. one point, moving her desk, moving her books. And she was reorganizing her George Washington books. Okay. And realized that they were all written by men. Um. Okay. This is, are we going to plug invisible women one more time? <laughs> I'm just teasing. No, I'll teasing. try not to. I'm teasing, but I love yeah. that you just, that she talks about that. Mm-hmm. And so she said, you know, I hadn't really thought about that. She did some research. She actually called the librarian over at um, of course she did. Mount Vernon, right? Of course she did. Who did a deep dive too. And they found out that she was the first woman really in 40 years and that her take on, on George is not about like his military career. Right. It's more about the people around him okay. and how he interacted with the people around him. And I thought it was fascinating then and, and did this deep dive in listicles of... Of course you did. I know, of um, presidents. And so there have been obviously 45 presidents. Right. And of the list of 45, how many do you think that that's like on the Barnes and Noble list mm-hmm. of like the best biography? Mm-hmm. How many do you think were written by women? Um, I'm going to just take a wild stab Mm -hmm. that none, three, three. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. So that's a poor showing, right? Yeah. Completely. Um, And so one of the things that Alexis talks about is as soon as she told people she was writing a book, they said, Oh, you're you're writing a book. Yes. About what? About George Washington. Oh, his wife. No. (laughs) His marriage. No. Well, 
what do you, about him? And, and it seemed like that was an interesting like stumbling block for people yeah. to understand that she would write about a man. Mm-hmm. And what I love is that she talks about the thigh men. And when you think of in your mind, the pictures that you've seen of, of George Washington, I know the what paintings, you're talking about. Like he's yeah. standing up with his thigh, kind of yeah. like the um, Captain Ron or whatever, the Captain Morgan one. <laughs> yeah. And on the horse and he's got yeah. like these big thighs. Yeah. And so she said, they're so concerned. All these men that have written all of these <laughs> biographies of these founding fathers about their virility, their strength, you know, all of these things, you know, the battles, the one, you know, the wins, the the losses, all of those things. Mm -hmm. And she said, their perspective is very much from the lens of of a man's eyes. And so Mm -hmm. I wanted to quote her here because I thought, yeah, that's it. And she says, um, for nearly two and a half centuries, most of the stories Americans have been, have told themselves about their country's past have been about men by men four men oh yeah and so preach it right <laughs> so I thought it was just really interesting and she says you know we always need to be looking at our history and I think in the last couple of years that's mm-hmm. especially last mm-hmm. year we've really been looking back and mm-hmm. trying to correct the lens with which we look at at events and, yes. and make appropriate changes right you know? well okay can I just say I don't yeah. think a man could get away with a title like that. I think it takes a special guy to get away with a title called you never forget your first. Mm-hmm. It <laughs> is definitely cheeky. And even the cover, I know. the picture is, um, it's a little bit cartoonized. I th- yeah. It and is. it's, I don't think his hands are the way the hands are actually in no. this portrait. Cause it looks like he's kind mm-hmm. of pulling his bow right. tie, but it's not, it's like an ascot or mm-hmm. something. I don't know what that is. Right. Or his, the lapels his ruffle, or something. His, yeah. yeah. Something. But his, what's interesting is she talked about his face in many of the portraits that are painted mm-hmm. of him. And he really did have very poor teeth. It's a misnomer. He did not have teeth made of wood, mm. but he had so many different dentures. He only had one tooth that, be- that was still his original tooth in his mouth okay, when he can died. Can you imagine a president nowadays with one tooth? Right. Because right. so much, so much stuff is, we see everything. Mm-hmm. We see way too much about these people. Mm-hmm. Right. Can you right. imagine how that would play in the media? And he had bad teeth going back to about 23 years old. Well, so. I mean, if you think about, I mean, did they have Dennis? Well, I certainly not the way we think of dentists no, today, but they did have dentists that, or people who pulled teeth, like, he, you know, there's a record of him paying five shillings or something oh to have a gosh. tooth pulled. And then um, he definitely had dentures made with ivory from hippopotamus and a couple mm-hmm, other mm-hmm. animals. And and also, I will say, he paid his slaves for teeth. So he would take a slave's tooth, pay them for it, and then they would make that into a denture. I Okay, so I went to the dentist this morning, mm-hmm. and I was thinking as I was driving home, because I have to have a root canal. Right. I was thinking, can you... Even 50 years ago, 40 years ago, how different a procedure like that might be, which got me thinking about if you were living even a hundred years ago and your tooth was hurting, Mm -hmm. you probably just live with it and hope that it doesn't go abscess or get crazy. Like, cause what are you going to do or pull it out? Exactly. And I think that's what they did. And so, because you, I mean, bad teeth, if they go crazy and get abscess can go like right down to your heart and you can die. I mean, people die, definitely died of it for sure. Right. So I can see why you would pull them. Yeah. But what a difference, you know, a hundred years can make 200 years, 300 True. And honestly, he had, he had everything. He survived tuberculosis. He survived small to- smallpox. He had dysentery. He had, you know, tonsillitis. Wow. He had um, diphtheria. He had malaria several times. I mean, he really, he made it through a lot of the diseases that took out a lot of the population. I bet he'd look at COVID and be like, okay. Yeah. Bring I don't it know. on. <laughs> but, but you know what ended up killing him is like a, a cold. What? You know? Yeah. He, it, it, maybe it was like the onset of maybe strep because he couldn't breathe. So right. he definitely was having constricted breathing. And one doctor who said um, that he wanted to do the tracheotomy mm-hmm. had been voted down by the others. Mm-hmm. And so they did bloodletting and, oh, no. you know, enemas those, and all kinds. Oh I know, right? Gosh. All these horrible things that actually dehydrated yeah. him and led really to his death. But um, did you ever see the HBO series John Adams? 
I think I did. It was that really like the eight, eight yeah, episodes it's like I did. Like five or six or something like that. And it was like dramatized, right? Yes. So it's dramatized. Yes. Uh-huh. Really good because they. I feel like they did a good job with, with yeah. Washington in there. So Well, and you know, you have something in, in common with George. Oh, I do? Yeah. Do tell. What is it? Donkeys. <gasps> did he love them too? He did. And he really was a, um, all about creating the American mule. Oh, really? Yeah, which mean, is, is that a cra- horse is and that- a donkey, and you get a <laughs> mule, right? <laughs> yes. Was that so, his pastime? I mean, it was on on Mount um, Vineyard or, or on Mount Vernon. Sorry, he really? did. He had all kinds of animals. He wanted. He had bison at one point that he brought out there, and wow, you know, bees and dogs and cats and cattle mm-hmm. and hogs and all those things. But mm-hmm. he really was about trying to to bring the American mule into. You know, the well, farms. You know what is kind of interesting about that is aren't mules notoriously stubborn? Yes. How metaphorical for the American nature. Just exactly. <laughs> just That's saying. good. Yeah. Just saying. Um, so some other things I liked about the book, she does talk about people that are around Washington when others don't. So some of the, the thigh men talk very negatively, I know, mm-hmm. about his mother, Mary. They've mm-hmm. called her shrewish, stubborn, unlettered, self-centered, demanding, mm. plain, homespun, crude, coarse, hypocritical. Oh. And one of the things Alexis did was find out that that's really a very critical lens to look at his mother. Mm-hmm. And she did leave letters behind and she had a common book. So she wrote in her common book mm-hmm. and everybody's spelling was really pretty wonky then right now it wasn't was it standardized no quite yeah so she says you know they're just sometimes these men are just flat out wrong and it's all an interpretation and so I loved that she looked at things just differently Mm -hmm. the one woman I probably would not care too much to meet is actually Martha really do tell okay well you know um Washington had slaves yeah and so did Martha okay and uh, Washington is guilty of never really taking the time to free the slaves. Right. He actually signed the first fugitive slave law. Mm -hmm. He vacillated back and forth between, should Mm -hmm. I free them? Should I not? Mm -hmm. I don't have the money. He was probably the wealthiest man Mm -hmm. in, um, you know, the United States at the time, but he was cash poor. And so he always felt like he couldn't let them go because how do you pay for labor? Right. And when he finally died, he had two different wills at the time and so on his deathbed he literally picks one of the two they burn one they keep one and he decides to free them all um on his death but martha gets to you know use them or own them until her death and so he you know he just like perpetuates this it's like you're free but you're not right and Mm -hmm. she never wanted to get rid of hers she had inherited them and she never wanted to get rid of them and um she was really not kind, not kind. And I think when another woman looks back at what's written mm-hmm. and has that feeling, I think I, I you feel like she feel like that's, m- yeah. I feel like that's better, better than a man saying, Oh, she's just a shrew. But I Martha, agree. that's really I know. disappointing. I think, yeah. I think because, well, I mean, to create the United States, there's some inspiration in that, right? You've got the Declaration of Independence. You've got all these great things that are happening mm-hmm. and democracy and people having a voice. And I think you want your leaders to be more of an ideal of like, hey, let's let's do something great right? instead of just, you know. Right. And there not. were others who were freeing, um, you know, that were f- freeing their slaves, but most of, and we know like Thomas Jefferson didn't, and there were so many men that did not. And so, you know, how would the world be? How would the United States be if that had not perpetuated, uh, you know, for the length of time that it did? So I thought it was a terrific read. I loved the way she crafted her tale. I can tell you're really Um, excited about it. What are you going to give that? I'm going to give it a four. Oh, yeah. High praise. High praise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. And you know what? I don't think it's necessary to have to read an 800 or a thousand page book. Well, from one of our, you know, <laughs> presidents, I brought you the, that one and it's mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah. And I think she's proved that you mm-hmm. can go through and you can document mm-hmm. and you can make something that's really interesting, truthful and, um, abbreviated, abbreviated and yeah. still feel like you've learned a lot. And I, I did, I felt like I learned a lot about him and I uh, 
That's why I gave it a four. Is that a book that's going into my library? Yes, it is. It oh, is your I'm book. I'm so excited. I'm like, did, yes. did, we buy, did I buy that book? Yes, you did. <laughs> okay. You did buy it. I'm really yeah. excited to actually promote that with mm-hmm. my staff because my history department here, or I should say so, social studies, they're huge readers, which yes. should not become be a huge surprise to the listeners. But right. I love it because they're super pro library and mm-hmm. they read a lot and they turn in their bookmarks. and Right. I, and, but it's predominantly male in that department. Right. And nothing against the guys. They're great guys, but I we only have two women that are in that department and I just think that I think it might be nice to mm-hmm. promote a book and they're really open minded. So they'll sure. probably I'm sure I'm sure somebody's gonna pick that up and be like, I've gotta read that. I think so too. I think it is really great for that reason and I'm hopeful that, you know, right in maybe four years we could have oh a woman gosh. so that we could have someone, you know, write a biography of a woman and have our first woman president. It's funny to me that Okay, so I watched the whole um, Crown series. Oh, right. And mm-hmm. I'm like up to date on it. And so I, the last season was about Margaret Thatcher and just like her role against right. the, with the Queen. And I'm thinking that's in the 80s, right? Because Ronald Reagan sure. was president mm-hmm. at the time here in the United States. And I'm thinking, how have we not gotten there yet? Right. right? If if Britain, which is like our cousin, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if they want to claim us, <laughs> right? <laughs> but we yeah. did. I mean, for yes. the most part, we came out of England. Like, how did they get there? And we're not even, like 40 years later, 30 years later, we're still not there. Right. I, yeah, I find their it parliamentary system works so different from ours. They have more parties than two parties. They take over immediately after the vote. Mm-hmm. You know, there are things that are, you know, different. Just different. Um, I did want to talk about one other. I see you have a really pretty book there. I did. Well, I'm not sure how pretty it is, but it is... It is a first edition. Okay. And so it is the personal memoirs of U.S. Grant, Ulysses S. Grant. It's the first volume. He wrote two volumes. How old is that book? This was 1885. Shut up. Yeah, and it's a first edition. It's got real leather Mm -hmm. cover. Mm -hmm. It's just very worn, you know, but it does still have the gold leaf. We'll take a picture. We'll take a picture. But in the whole list of all of the biographies that I looked at, He's the only one that wrote his own on there. So it's an autobiography. And he was suffering from throat cancer mm. and really couldn't speak anymore. And he really wrote this. To, and and scholars say it really is the best because it's his words. Right, right. And it's just two large volumes of his words. But, wow. Um, I, I like how you put that very gingerly. It's two large <laughs> exactly. volumes. Yeah. He was a two-term president, correct? He was. He was, actually. I think it was 1869 to 1877. I love how you just pulled that out. I know. Well, I'm, <laughs> yes. We'll say but that. But you're, yes. you're also a history yeah. person, so. But it's, um, so it's, I think that might be why there's two volumes. If you're president for eight years, plus all of that history of the Civil War. Right. You know, you have a lot to say. And right. he really wanted to create something that would financially set his family up. And it yeah. did. Because at the end of his life, what was... He was destitute. He didn't have any money. Can you even imagine a president now? No. And you know what? Even with Washington, he didn't take a salary for the eight years that he was president. He should have. Because right. if he had, then he would have had the cash to free to his free slaves, slaves. Right? But he didn't because he thought it was ungentlemanly to really own up to the fact that he needed the money. That's a very aristocratic... Mm-hmm bought. And he had lots of land, Mm -hmm. so he could have sold land and Mm -hmm. he did put land up for sale, but he either didn't get an offer that was enough, Mm -hmm. he felt, or Mm -hmm. it was someone he didn't want to sell it to. So he was, you know, pretty snobby about all of that. Well, I mean, again, a little bit of a holdover from, I think, the UK, like, you know, and the aristocrats and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, having a, a monarch and titles and lands and things like that so interesting it well, did make me really think about everything that's out there about our presidents though so i'm so i'm really looking forward to our friday episode friday four. our friday four i know we have some good picks we do so you'll have to listen in on friday exactly. and hear our picks for sure exactly. okay so i guess we're gonna wrap it up then we are and again mine was you never forget your first a biography of george washington by alexis co and mine was Sisters First, Stories from Our Wild and Wonderful Life by Jenna Bush Hager and Barbara Pierce Bush. Okay, right. I guess we're going to see, see you in the stacks. stacks.